Alright folks, welcome to yet another Explaining Horrors, the series in which I explore a multitude of different ghouls, ghosts, creatures, villains, demons, scary people, or whatever from various horror media. I'd like to thank you all for the incredible support on this series so far. The first episode is actually my most popular video ever, so that's insane. I love making these, so I'm glad you guys also love watching them. Anyways, today we're going to be looking at a bit of a lesser known entity from the works of horror mangaka Junji Ito. So far, we've only covered characters that have appeared in multiple Junji Ito stories, but today we are tackling a creature that, to my knowledge, has only ever appeared once in what I consider to be one of Ito's creepiest stories. The creature has no official name, although I've decided to call it the Black Bird on account of the story it appears in being titled, well, Blackbird. It seems to live in the mountainous regions of Japan, and it appears in most cases as a humanoid woman dressed in all black. Its defining features include eyes that are completely white, large lips, and many sharp needle-like teeth, similar to the sharp teeth-like ridges that can be found on the beaks of certain species of bird. It can also take the form of a large black bird, but retains its human-like head, making this, to me anyways, one of Ito's more unsettling-looking monsters. Much like Fuchi, this creature is reminiscent of some sort of shape-shifting skinwalker or other strange cryptid-like creature. I looked into the many different myths, legends, and folklore of cultures from all around the world to see if there was anything matching its description. There are the Alkanos, Sirens, and Gamayun from Slavic folklore, the Ba of ancient Egypt, the Harpies of Greek mythology, and even the Japanese Yokai Tengu. In fact, most cultures have some sort of human-bird crossover somewhere within their lore. But in all of my searching, I found nothing that perfectly matched both the appearance and behavior of this horrific thing, besides it maybe just being some sort of shape-shifting witch or demon. I suppose I should go over the story in which it appears. But before I do that, while we're on the topic of legends, I suppose now would be a great time to mention the sponsor of today's video. Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends, for those of you who don't know, is a free-to-play, turn-based, champion-focused strategy game that millions of people around the world are playing. And I know what you're thinking. You've seen ads for this game before, and you still haven't downloaded it. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you, I'm going off script here, I felt the same way. That is until recently when I actually downloaded the game and decided to give it a chance, and I have to tell you, I am pleasantly surprised with how fun and addicting it actually is. The graphics are incredible for a mobile game and the content seems endless, with tons of really unique bosses to fight, PvP, billions of different ways to customize and strategize with your champions. This is easily the most content-rich mobile strategy game I've ever played. Now the first thing I did was take a look at all of the different champions I could potentially unlock, and I have to say, the best thing about this game is its incredible champion design. You see, there are these different factions, and within each faction there are many different champions to be unlocked. Being that this is a horror channel, I want to show you my favorite horrific champions that I plan on building a team with. First of all, my favorite champion because I love Halloween is Harvest Jack from the Undead Hordes faction. Also in that faction, my second favorite champion, the creepy doll-like character Little Miss Annie. And finally, the witch-inspired Gerda Bogbrew from the Ogren Tribes faction. I just can't get over how cool all these characters look, and I can't wait to collect more of them. They even have a Skinwalkers faction with characters like Brachis the Shifter. Now is as good a time as any to hop into the game, as this month Raid has a huge new update with tons of new features including a new dungeon and the introduction of Artifact Ascension. Players can now fight their way through the Sand Devil's Necropolis and earn precious oil that can be used to take your artifacts to the next level. And as if there wasn't already enough awesome champions, there are a bunch of new ones being added to the mix too, including some holiday themed champions to get you in the festive spirit, along with a new winter look for the game's home base, the Bastion. Speaking of special themed champions, Raid also just put MMA legend Ronda Rousey in the game. Yeah, you heard correctly, they really made Ronda Rousey a champion and you can get her for free right now whether you're a new player or a longtime player. All you need to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and February 20th and Ronda is yours. That's it. Also, to celebrate Ronda's arrival in Raid, you can use special promo code RAIDRONDA to get a bunch of helpful stuff like a 3-day 100% XP boost, 500k silver, and 5 energy refills. Perfect for leveling your new Ronda champion so she's at the top of her game. Just enter promo code RAIDRONDA in the game and all of those prizes will be yours. Also, if you are an Amazon Prime member, you can get your exclusive rewards in Raid right now. Honestly guys, it's a pretty fun game and if you haven't started playing yet, just click the link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen and you'll get some unique bonuses worth $30. 
We're talking a free epic champion Virgis, 200k silver, an XP boost, and an ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in the game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here, available for 30 days for new players only. Once you're in the game, come find me under the name Tbry Sensei and maybe I'll let you join my clan. Once again, huge thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Anyways, back to the matter at hand, the Blackbird. The story goes that a bird watcher named Kume was on a hike on the Shirogane Dake mountain when he came across an injured man, Shiro Moriguchi, on the ground asking for his help. Kume called for help and the man was rescued and brought to the hospital. According to authorities, Shiro had submitted a mountaineering log for the trip a month prior, meaning that he had somehow survived on the mountain unable to move with his broken legs for a whole month. At first, Shiro tells them that he simply rationed the food in his backpack to stay alive, but that wasn't the truth. Shiro asked Kume to stay overnight at the hospital. He seemed as though he was scared of something, so Kume agreed to stay. And it was that night that he saw it. Kume was awoken in the middle of the night by a strange woman on top of Shiro feeding him with a strange chewed up meat from her mouth. She looked at Kume and smiled before leaving the room. Shiro spit out the meat and explained the truth of his incident on the mountain to Kume. He said that about a week after his fall, when he was on the verge of succumbing to starvation, this woman appeared from the forest and without saying a word, she fed him chewed up raw meat from her mouth. Like a bird feeding its young. However, she did not call for help. She simply laughed and went back into the woods. After that, she would return each day to feed him either raw meat or blood in the same way. Shiro had hoped that she would not return anymore now that he had been rescued, but she still came back to feed him. The next night, she returned again, and Kume chased her out of the hospital. The woman then transformed into a large black bird and flew off. The next day, Kume filed a police report about the woman, and they took the strange meat as evidence. They eventually determined the meat to be human flesh, and interrogated the two men suspecting them of some sort of murder, but there just wasn't enough evidence or information to go on. After that night, the strange woman didn't appear again, and Shiro moved back to Tokyo to find a job and get away from the area that this all took place. A few years later, Shiro Moroguchi's corpse was discovered in a frozen hollow on the summit of Mount Fuji. They say that when he was found, there was a huge black bird pecking at his corpse, but the truth of that is unconfirmed. The strangest part of this story, however, is that investigators revealed that the meat Shiro was being fed years earlier by the strange bird woman was a perfect match for Shiro's own DNA. Somehow, he was being fed his own flesh. The entries into Shiro's journal shed some light on the events that took place just before his death. On August 8th, the woman appeared in his room despite having locked the door. She bit him and tore off some of his flesh. He attempted to flee the country, but on August 10th, the monster had captured him and brought him to a crater on Mount Fuji, where she tore off the flesh from his thigh, leaving him unable to walk. She then returned to take a little more of his flesh each day. Shiro notes that this is the reverse of how she fed him a little bit of flesh every day a few years back. Reading this journal, Kume comes to the conclusion that the creature was traveling back in time to feed Shiro his own flesh. The story ends with Kume on another bird watching hike where he is knocked off the side of a cliff by the same bird woman who then proceeds to feed him what is presumably his own flesh. So there are a few things we can gather from this story. The first is that the black bird clearly hunts for her wounded victims in the mountains, but considering Shiro doesn't mention seeing her prior to her coming to feed him, it means that she doesn't always cause the initial injury, unless you assume that she caused Shiro's injury without him knowing. I also believe that she actually chose Kume as her next target the first night she appeared to feed Shiro in the hospital. She gets really close to him and smiles, almost as if she's taken a liking to him. This tells me that she chooses her victims in some way and that her activities are not exactly random. Shiro explained that as an infant he had been left under a tree for a week before he was found, and that it was a miracle he lived. Although I can't confirm that it's true, Shiro theorizes that maybe the creature was feeding him back then as well, which would imply that she followed him his entire life, possibly thinking that he was her child. Another thing is that when Shiro's body was found, they claimed that there was a large black bird pecking at his corpse. Of course, it states that the truth of this is unknown, but in the depiction, it shows the bird woman in bird form, but this time her head is also that of a bird. Meaning that if there is truth to this specific depiction, then she is able to transform fully into a bird and leaving her human head had previously been a choice and not a rule of her shapeshifting. 
We can also deduce from the story that her physical strength must be pretty great, considering she was able to capture Shiro, a fully grown man, and carry him up onto Mount Fuji. The black bird doesn't seem to speak at all, which makes her seem more animalistic and instinctive compared to a human being. Vocally, the only thing it seems to do is let out this creepy laugh, which makes this thing even more unsettling. Lastly, I should address the elephant in the room. That being that yes, it would appear that this creature can time travel, making it seem as though this is a very powerful entity. Again, we don't know what it is. Could be a demon, could be a witch, could be anything. We also don't know what its motive is. Why would it kill someone and then travel back in time to save that same person? It also presents us with sort of a problem. Because if she didn't save Shiro by feeding him, he would have died earlier and she wouldn't have been able to kill him in the future to save him in the first place. So it really doesn't make sense. It creates this time loop that doesn't have a clear beginning. She couldn't have killed him first because he would already have been dead. And she couldn't have saved him first because she needed to kill him in the future to save him. If we add the story about him being a baby to the mix, and we add in other victims of this process like Kume and god knows how many others, it means that this creature is constantly traveling through time in this endless loop of killing people and then saving them in multiple different years depending on how many people she's in this kind of loop with. It means that every day she goes into the future and kills all the people she saved in the past, and then she travels back in time and feeds all of those people their own flesh, and repeats that forever. Honestly, that sounds like a miserable existence, and I can't deduce a reason as to why she would be doing it. It seems that this black bird may just be beyond human understanding. As always, I'd love to hear your theories in the comments as to why you believe the blackbird does what it does or what you think it is. Of course, we've reached the point in this video where we count just how many kills this thing has, and it's really easy today. We can only really confirm two kills, that being Shiro and Kume. And yes, despite it not showing Kume's death, we know that she feeds the injured people their own flesh from the future, meaning that when she is feeding Kume at the end of the story, he is eating the body of himself, confirming that she has already killed him in the future, if that makes sense. So two confirmed kills, but much like many of Junji Ito's creations, her true kill count is unknown, being that we have no way of telling just how many other poor hikers have fallen prey to the black bird. Anyways, that's really all I can tell you. Not a particularly complicated creature, but one that I felt was interesting and creepy enough to make a video on. Once again, I'd like to thank Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed today's video, consider subscribing to keep up with more content like this, leave a like and share the video to help the channel grow, and don't forget to tell me your thoughts on the Blackbird in the comments below. Thanks for watching, see you guys next time.